everybody, it's Barbie, Petal Pusher. Welcome to my channel. It has been almost three months since I made a video. Um, mainly because I'm never alone. The kids are always here. And I have basically told my husband, look, you gotta keep them busy right now. I've gotta make a video. My stuff is piling up. It's time. So I hope you guys have all been doing well. If you are a new person here, thank you so much for showing up. I hope you like what you see. There's a little bit of everything going on around here. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. I'm, I'm thankful that you uh, stayed with me, even all these months of radio silence from me. So thank you so much. Um, today is Sunday, July 19th. We had church this morning. We've been doing um, church in our parking lot. And even at 8.30 this morning, it was a 90 degree heat index. So that was good and sticky and sweaty. Thankfully, there was a little breeze that made it better. I hope you're not uh, too hot and sticky where you are. All right, I've got, I'm just going to kind of jump in. I've got some new releases to show you guys. I've got some finishes from Stitch Mania. That's how long ago it's been since I've made a video that, yes, I still haven't discussed Stitch Mania and we're in the second half of July. Um, I've got several purchases and I've got some gifts from some people. So um, let's start with gifts, all right? So I can't remember when I got any of this stuff. Um, some of these things I can kind of remember like, oh yeah, this had happened, so this led to that kind of deal. So. I got this sometime in, I want to say May. This was a nice gift. It's from Jennifer Upton. So thank you so much. She sent me, it's a chart. This was out of the um, Gift of Stitching magazines. I don't know if you guys got in on that when there were a bunch of them on sale on Etsy. I know I bought some of them, but I don't know if I have this one. But Jen knows I'm a Jane Austen fan, and so she sent me this pattern. So thank you so much. It's very pretty. Just got to figure out when to have time to stitch it. So it goes in the collection. And then, oh, and she sent me a cute little card too. And then a belated birthday gift came in from Helen, Helen D., East Coast Crafter. And this cute pillow she made me. And the best part is the bee's wings. I don't think it's picking up here in my light trying a new light so let me know what you guys think it, I think the colors good but I notice if I get too close woo, it washes out um, it has a little sparkle in the wings so. and that's not good enough it's these pretty ribbons my only problem is I need Misty to come here to Illinois and teach me how to do her pretty ruched ribbon she's like the queen of that and I I'm too impatient to do it, I think. So thank you so much, Helen. And she also sent a really pretty, ooh, look at that shine, pretty card. All right, let's do, um, let's do new releases so we can kind of get going with some other stuff. So I had a new release in May, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was so like pumped after market in March like oh yeah I'm motivated I've got all these great ideas I'm really gonna hit it like while the kids are still in school these last two months of school or so I'm just gonna like bust out designs I'm gonna get ahead of the game for once because I'm never ahead of the game I had so many high hopes so many great plans and we got home from market and the whole world went nuts as we all know and those plans just went so it's it hasn't been easy. I don't know how some of you other designers with kids at home have done it. Um, it's been a struggle for me. My kids are still pretty young. They're 9, 7, and 3. So um, we've just been trying to do a lot of things to kind of keep occupied, keep our minds off of what's going on. We're doing a lot of gardening. The kids each have their own. They're actually sheep troughs, their own vegetable gardens. So we were taking care of those and um, just, just doing what we can. So... I kind of kept in mind the circumstances of the world <laughs> while I was designing these next two designs as far as materials. So hopefully that will help you out. So let me just show you. The first thing that came out was in May, and you may or may not have seen this yet. It 
it's called Plant Happiness. And um, again, kind of keeping in mind, I know there's kind of a shortage almost on being able to get some of the supplies that we're used to being able to just quickly order or get. So I tried to stitch it on things that were budget friendly and easy for you hopefully to get. So this is just stitched on white Monaco. I did use Sulky threads on this, which are fantastic to work with if you haven't ever used them before. They're great, but there is a DMC conversion. So you can just use DMC on Monaco and achieve the same kind of results. Um, this was kind of my motto for the spring. Like, okay, I may not be able to control what's going on, but I can plant happiness. I can, I can try to make the best of the situation. And you know it makes things better. Pom-pom trim always makes life better in my opinion. So I finished it into this cute little pillow. Um, if you stitch it on a 28 or a 14 count Ada, um, it does fit into an 8x10 frame. But I thought this would be a nice pillow. And show you my laziness factor. <laughs> Still have not finished the back. It's been sitting like this since May. Pretty on the front. Still not finished in the back, but oh well. So this is in my shop, and um, it is available through Hoffman and at your LNS if you want it. So give them a call. So I thought, okay, if you plant happiness, what's going to be the result, right? Oh, rewind. You can tell I, I haven't done this in a while. You've probably already figured it out. The design is inspired by a vintage quilt. Um, I should have grabbed it. Hang on, I'm gonna get up and grab something. It's just around the corner. I'll be right back. All right, do you guys remember, if you've been with me for a while, I had gone to my favorite thrift store and um, found this quilt for like, I don't even remember, was it 10 bucks? Something ridiculous. I'll just show you part of it. Isn't it beautiful? I just love the colors. I love the pink and the yellow and the green. See, clearly wasn't prepared. Um, and so I knew when I got that quilt, like I wanted to make something kind of in that color scheme and based off this idea of vintage quilts, and I've always loved the grandma's flower garden pattern, which is what this is. So it's those hexagons. Sad that I'm a little winded from running over to the other side of the room and grabbing a quilt. <sighs> anyway, so I tried to envision like if you actually had scraps of fabric and you made and sewed it into this little quilt design, so that's why each little piece has like a little pattern on it, like it was a fabric scrap that you found. So that is plant happiness. And as I was saying before, I totally remembered where my inspiration came from. I feel like if you are actively trying to plant happiness wherever you go, then you're going to have a harvest in the end, right? So if you plant happiness, you will harvest joy. So this is my new release. This just came out. Um, clearly a companion piece. And I wanted to show you that, yes, it does fit. This is just an 8x10 frame. Mm, looks like I got it. I don't know. Hobby Lobby or Michaels. It was one of the two. Um, again, very budget-friendly, easy-to-acquire material-friendly on Monaco. This time this is just with DMC. And I think it turned out great. Same kind of idea. I kind of wanted it to look like you had... Um, taken, fa I can't talk either, fabric scraps and pieced together like you would for a quilt. Um, some of the colors do repeat, so if you have threads from this one, you can use them again in this one. But I really love how it turned out, and I feel like this is the perfect kind of piece to hang up in your house for like, and like I just took down all of my patriotic stuff, my 4th of July things. And so you have that gap where it's like, it's too early for pumpkins. I don't want my fall stuff out yet. So this is a good late summer decor item in my opinion. So plant happiness, you harvest joy. Spread that happiness around the best we can during this time. 
So both of those are available as PDFs um, or paper copies in my Etsy shop. This one is going to be in my shop at the end of this coming week. Um, I wanted to give LNS's first dibs. So if you're if you don't have a local shop or an online place you like to go, just wait till the end of the week and it will be there. So those are my new releases. Not exactly a new release, but one thing I did want to tell you about. Dig in my piles here. A new paper pattern to my shop is teacups. This is an older design. I made it in 2016. Um, I'm sure you can figure out out what it's based off of, Alice in Wonderland. Here's the actual model. And I'm trying to <laughs> finally, you know, it's only been four plus years, I'm trying to get it mounted and stuck in this frame. So if I can get a little free time, I will have that. But if you are interested, it is available in a paper copy in my shop. And I will put a link down below to my Etsy shop. It's pedalpusher.etsy.com. So that's the shop talk. Let's move on to stuff I've bought and stuff I've actually finished. So let's do purchases first. Get a little organized here. All right. Um, this first one was from Market. It just, she had to restock, so it came in a little bit later. So I hadn't gotten to share it with you yet but it's as a gift for someone. I'm going to try to stitch it. So it's be kind. I might leave off the alphabet. We'll see, but I thought that was really pretty. That's purchase number one. Then let's see, um, McKenna Stitching in Sequins, 1884 Stitchery, kept posting this on her Instagram and I'm not usually a super huge sampler person, although I feel like I'm kind of drawn more and more towards certain samplers and that style. But every time she posted this, I just kept staring at it and like, she just broke me down. I couldn't resist any longer. There's not a great full size picture on the cover. Hold on. I'm sure you've probably seen this. A lot of other people bought it because it's so beautiful. Nope. It's called Like a Cherry Blossom by Stitches Through the Years. And I love that it's got this floral border. The colors are all kind of soft, whites and blues and creams and greens, which really appeals to me. And I like the little verse on it. It says, your mind is a garden, your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. So kind of a good mantra. It's big. Um... I'd like to start it sometime soonish, but we'll just have to see. So, while I was there, because as we all know, no chart can travel alone, I started looking through McKenna's charity section on her website, and I saw these, and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure that's the same thing McKenna has had on her wall for, I don't know, a couple years, and I've always loved it. I mean, hello? My business name is Petal Pusher. Do you think I like flowers? Just a little bit. Do I love old stuff? Uh, yeah. Right up my alley. They went click, add to cart, lickety split, and now they're here with me and I love them and I need to get them pressed and framed and on my wall somewhere because look how pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? So it is cross stitch, but they're really big stitches. So there's this one. And I think this one might be my favorite, especially like early spring. Love it. So these two came home to me, lickety split, and I love them and they're beautiful and I will take good care of them. So thank you, McKenna. So I've tried to be somewhat good about purchasing things, but every so often I feel like I'd have a really bad day these last few months and I'm like, I need something. I need to pick me up. So I want to say I went on to Amazon. Oh, 
I feel like it was when the governor announced here that we were going to have another month, basically, of lockdown. Um, I think Illinois has been one of the more strict states in the country as far as um, stay-at-home orders or, like, when things have started opening back up. We've been we've been pretty late, and it hasn't always been easy. So I think that was one of those days where I was like, I need a present. I need to treat myself. So these are what I ordered. They took a while to get here. One of them came from England. It took like a month and a half, but it was nice to have something to look forward to. So I got this book, 19th Century Chart and Patterns from Europe. Just sometimes it's really nice as a designer to be able to look through and just kind of get some ideas. It's not that I'm going to copy anything from this, but just to be like, oh, that's, that's a thought. And then you kind of springboard off of that. Um, so yeah, this just has some some nifty little things in it. And I also got, kind of what I was talking about earlier, this book called Samplers. And it kind of gives a history. It's more, um, once I got it, and I haven't read it yet because, again, time, um, but it seems it's more of like history of samplers more so in England, which makes sense because that's where this book came from. It does have one chapter towards the end called The American Connection. So I think in the future, I would like to get um, more books that are more specific to sampler styles here in the U.S. But it has um, helped me a lot with some designs that I'm working on and just kind of learning more about the history of what we do and why we do it. And that's kind of fascinating to me. So two good books. Very happy with those purchases. My last purchase is I believe it was Emily C. Eclectic Possessions Fault. Um, if it's not, sorry, Emily. But I think she mentioned that Not Forgotten Farm was having a sale on Etsy. Again, this was like, sales not going on now that I'm aware of. This was like back in May. Um, so I went on and I looked around and I saw these and I had to get them. I originally went for that Tom Turkey. You know, it's pretty big and it has like a date somewhere in it. I don't know. You've, you've probably seen it. I've loved that turkey forever and of course it was out of stock. But I managed to find some other things to buy. Um, so there's this one. It's called Old Mustard Moon. I don't know. I just really like it. I like that kind of bluey gray color. Um, I like that it's A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y. And it says this is my work here. Be kind. Oh, it's pretty big too. It's bigger than you think. It's 182 by 192. So, someday pile. And I also grabbed this one because I just thought it was neat too. Family tree. Who can resist a good bird? So yeah. That concludes all of my purchases. I did, um, I had received a gift certificate from someone for my birthday um, to 123 Stitch. And <laughs> I'm the type of person, does anyone else do this? I'm the type of person, if you give me a gift certificate or a gift card, like, I'm not a hoarder of it, but I am like so careful. Like, okay, how am I going to spend this? I really want to get something I'm truly going to like. And I'm going to try to stretch this as far as I can. So like... You know, if I, I've had gift certificates from, or gift cards that I'll get at Christmas and I won't spend them till like October <laughs> because I'm like, well, wait, I, I don't really need that yet. So I'll wait a little bit. And it's always a funny look on the cashier's face when I'm like, Ding, and I pop it out and it's got Christmas trees on it. And they're like, is this from Christmas? Yes, it is. Cash that baby in. So I finally did use my birthday, um, gift certificate to 123 Stitch. So the next time you see me, I will have a few more goodies to show you. So let's talk about Stitch Mania, shall we? Way back in May, um, I tried to do the Stitch Sania method that Stephanie, Lindy Stitches, was doing. And I was going fairly well. And then I just was like, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> Um, my goal, my focus piece, I did get accomplished. So I, I had good results, I feel like, from Stitchania. 
So my focus piece was Black Cat Hollow by Barbara Anna. Um, I had already started it and I had done just the middle section of it. So it comes in three bands. I'll show you here in a second. And so my goal was like, okay, if I get, I basically had four weeks to do the two remaining um, bands. So I broke them in half and it was going to be okay if I get this chunk done, then on the weekend I get to have a new start. And then the next week I do the next chunk and then on the weekend I have a new start. And so my last video I showed you guys quite a few new starts that I had tentatively lined up. I only ended up starting one of them, but I ended up instead of doing a new start each weekend, I would just come back to that piece on the weekend. So I ended up with two finishes rather than one finish and three or four new starts. It worked out well for me. I was happy. So here's my Black Cat Hollow Cell. It's not framed yet, but I absolutely love it. So I stitched this on, um, this is an even weave. I think it's a Lugana or a Joblin. I can never tell the difference. I think it's Joblin maybe. Um, that I had dyed with pearl gray writ and then I coffee tea dyed it on top of it. I love how the color turned out. Then I converted all of my um, colors here to color and cotton flosses because I love them and I have a bunch of them so might as well use them. Um, I did make some changes. So first change is the border. There's just really no good way to hold this up. All right. So on the border, what it's supposed to do is like, I think it's this side, all of these buds are supposed to be yellow and this side, all the buds are supposed to be orange. And I don't know why, but that bothered me. <laughs> so I kind of did a jumble of a mix and match of yellows and oranges. And personally, I like it better. Um, the only other change I did is I changed some of the skin tones on the witches. Um, they were charted all in this color, but um, I did kind of a medium brown and then a darker brown, and I like it much better. A little diversity. So I absolutely love it. Um, it is black DMC, but everything else is color and cotton. Oh, I did take out, I think there was an ABC123 here, and I got rid of those. Didn't need them, but love it. Need to find a good frame for it. I might even just take it to the framers and get it done professionally because this bad boy is going to be up on my wall. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on. Sorry. My phone is off, so I thought calls wouldn't come through. But apparently they still will on my computer. So that is finish number one. That was my focus piece for Stitch Mania. Here is what I was my first start on the weekend. I actually have the bag full of stuff still. So it was Lizzie Kate's Buzzy String. Because I've already done the Christmas one, the Halloween one, and the Thanksgiving one. So I need to get this fully finished so we can hang it up. Because, you know, summer's going by pretty quickly. And here it is. Uh, this is stitched on 28 count. Um, Cashel Linen. It's called Demoiselle. It's where I'm picture this plus. It was one of their new 2019 colors. But so pretty. Again, converted mainly to color and cotton. I think I might have used a couple DMCs, but I think it turned out really cute. I brightened up a few things. Um, trying to think, what else did I do? I guess I could look. I think it was mainly just I, I popped up a few colors a little bit, a little bit brighter, a little bit jazzier. Yep, that was it. Just brightened. So that was my other Stitch Mania finish. I was very happy with that. All right. I have one other finish to show you. It's not a cross stitch finish, but I have been sharing it on Instagram. So again, in March, when all of this craziness started going down, um, I thought, okay, what a, what a good time. You know you're going to be home. We were being sillyly optimistic um, in March. And it was like, okay, we have to be home for the next two weeks. Ha ha. Um, why don't you try to 
you know, pick up a new craft and see if you can get it done in two weeks. Well, two weeks is now, you know, changed to however many months later. And I did finally get it done. So I have always wanted to know how to crochet more. Um, I keep hearing little footsteps over on the stairs. So we'll see. Um, nope. On upstairs I'll be up in a minute okay so I've always wanted to know how to crochet specifically granny squares and I had never learned how to do that yet um, so I thought now's the time I had a bunch of yarn so I was gonna go for it so I started doing that and this became kind of my Sunday project we would do church online and so I would just sit on the couch and watch church and crochet um, and I finally got it done and I got it all hooked together let me show you Uh, back out of my little corner here. So this is all just yarn from Michaels. Those are the colors I chose. And it's nice and big. It's perfect. It's perfect to cuddle under um, on the couch. Go back up a little bit. You can see it all the way. But there it is. This will not be my last granny square blanket. Um, I'm already kind of plotting and planning like this is the traditional kind of granny square, I guess. I don't know much about crochet. Sorry, crocheters. But I want to do the one where it's like the, it's round and they're kind of puffy almost. I would love to try that. If you ever want some really good, like if you like these kinds of colors and you want some really good granny square crochet inspiration, there's an Instagram account that I follow called Modern Maven. And, um... She's the one that, like, she kept showing these crochet blankets she was making, and I loved her colors. And she was like, look, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Here's the tutorial on YouTube that I use. So I looked it up and just taught myself how to do it, and it was pretty easy. So if you don't think you can do it, you can. Give it a whirl. Now's the time. It's not too bad. All right, I'm looking around my big mess here, and I think I've showed you guys everything. Um, it will probably be, I'm going to guess it's going to be sometime about a month from now when I do my next video. Our kids are supposed to go back to school August 13th. We'll see. I don't know. Um, but if that's the case, then hopefully I could squeak in a quick video when they are at school. So it's going to be a shortened school day is what our district is doing. Um, and then you did have the option for remote learning as well, but my kids are really desperate for socialization. Um, th there's just no good, there's no good decision. I'm not going to get into it, but anyway, that's what we're going with. Um, so yeah, in about a month, I should have another video for you where hopefully I'll be showing off my fall Halloween releases. Um, I think you guys are going to like them. How about... Um, Let's do a giveaway. Since I haven't been on here for a while, let's do a giveaway. So let's give away my two new releases. I'm going to do one of each. So just somewhere in your comment, tell me which one you like or would like to be entered in. Um, don't say giveaway. Don't, you know, you know all the rules by now. Be 18, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we're going to give away plant happiness. So you just have to say plant happiness somewhere in your comment. Or Harvest Joy. Same thing. Say Harvest Joy somewhere in your comment. Um, I'll announce the winner on the next video. So you have until then. So you've got about a month. Until, well, should we do a month? Yeah, we'll do a month. Um, until I announce the winners of those. And, uh, yeah, you can be entered for both if you want to say you like both of them. Say Plant Happiness and Harvest Joy. And we'll go from there. Sound good? Clearly I haven't done this in a while. Very rusty. All right. Well, I think that's all for today. I will see you guys in about a month. Until then, keep stitching. Keep planning happiness. Um, hope your summer goes well. Hope you're getting lots of fruits and veggies out in your gardens if that's your thing. If not, go to the store and buy some fresh fruit because it's delicious. <laughs> all right. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.